Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the GTX 560 Ti Super Clocked Graphics Card. I'd like to thank CCL Online for sending me this. They are a great company who specialise in computers and components here in the UK and they also have a very nice clearance section too, which is always a bonus for us budget gamers. I'll leave a link to them in the description below. So what sets this apart from the standard 560 Ti is that EVGA overclocked it from the factory, giving it an extra performance performance boost, eliminating the need for the end user to perform any overclocks themselves. That makes it ideal for PC builders who don't have much overclock experience, and for those who want extra performance out of the box without having to mess around with clock speeds, although it is a very simple practice and we will be pushing this card a bit further later on. When the $250.560 Ti released in 2011, it was praised for its performance at the price point, and it was a card I really wanted but just could not not afford. These days you can find them for less than £50 or dollars and they can be had in a 1GB or 2GB variant. 2GB would be better as of 2017, but this superclocked edition features just 1GB of GDDR5 VRAM. Other specs include a 900MHz base clock up from the standard 822, as well as 384 CUDA cores. EVGA recommend a 500 watt PSU to power it along with 30 amps on the 12V rail and two 6-pin PCIe connectors. Today we'll be checking out its performance in games as well as seeing what it takes to get an old mid-range card like this to hit 60 FPS. So let's get started. First of all I let the games choose the settings to see what sort of performance you could expect without any tweaking and for the most part the card did okay. With The Witcher 3 at 1080p and the low preset we saw an average of 35 FPS in and around Novigrad. A pretty smooth experience that reducing the resolution really improved. At 720p we averaged 55. Keep in mind all recording was done internally today as my capture device decided to stop working, so the CPU usage is reported as a little higher than it should be. All frame rate figures were taken when not recording though for complete accuracy. But let's say you want 60 FPS all the time, you won't settle for anything less. What could you do to further improve the 560 Ti's performance? Well, first of all we overclocked the card a little more and then increased the game's texture MIP bias setting to 1. This can be done with the help of the Hunter's Config Launcher that can be found at the Witcher 3 Nexus. As you can see it gives the game a more cartoony feel, but it will rarely drop below 60 FPS and sometimes go above and beyond 8. This 60 FPS stuff is just for fun, of course, as I'm sure a lot of you would prefer better graphical quality with slightly decreased performance, especially on this older card. But, in the spirit of things, it was time to move on to the mess that is Assassin's Creed Origins. See, even with the lowest possible setting, the game will not be playable, and that's also with a reduced resolution scale of 50%. One of the issues is that we are still exceeding the VRAM limit. So let's see what we can do. I doubt we can achieve anywhere close to 60 FPS, but let's see. Opening up the aco.ini file from your documents allows further tweaking, and changing this pixel density line will reduce resolution scaling even further. Prepare your eyes. This is almost as low as I could set things, and I also use the INI file to turn off bloom and other effects. We did see a 37 FPS average, but that's about the only thing I could see in this newly generated 16-bit Egypt, and unfortunately you won't get anywhere close to 60 FPS, and in fact the game still isn't really playable in its current state due to the drops and stutters. The good news is that Battlefield 1, which defaulted to low, ran very well at 720p with 62 frames per second. 1080p wasn't really an option because of stutter and low frame rates, but again, I do believe the lacking VRAM plays a big part here. The game requires no further tweaks and is enjoyable on the 560 Ti, though the 2GB version of the card would be your best bet if you can find one. The same can be said for GTA 5, which ran at 60 frames per second at 1080p when not recording with a mix of normal and high settings. You could drop the resolution or lower the population density and other sliders, but these settings allow for a decent enough looking game and a very playable one. Overwatch is also a great game for the 560 Ti. With the low preset and 100% scaling, I saw an overall average of 65 FPS across a few different maps. This was also set at 1080p so there were no sacrifices made in the way of resolution and dropping things down to say 720p is probably unnecessary here. Finally it's the latest COD. 
at 720p with the default low settings, the game will run fine in open areas, but confined combat will lead to low frame rates that struggle to get out of the high 20s. It is playable on the 560 in some respects, but, and I know you probably don't want to hear this, switching to 800 by 600 made a ridiculous amount of difference and saw an increased average to 75 frames per second. It doesn't look good, but turning on anti-aliasing would smooth some of the jagged edges out and let you remain above 60 FPS pretty much most of the time. Overall, the 1GB 560 Ti will struggle in a lot of modern games. It's a card that's best left to those of you who want a cheap eSports system, or perhaps those of you who do have lower resolution monitors. If you buy a 560 Ti in 2017, you may be disappointed, though most games that released before 2014-15 would likely all run fine with reduced settings, as you saw by the GTA 5 result. It's still one of my favourite cards because it was my old dream GPU, and a bit of tweaking can probably see it through the rest of the year, but it seems that one of 2011's most interesting cards is finally coming to the end of its life. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look back at the 560 Ti, as well as uh, seeing what we could do with it in terms of achieving the highest frame rate possible. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.